So if you continue to post, if you continue to do something over and over and over again, stay consistent, you never know when that next one, so the one more video is actually gonna get you to the place that you want to go. Welcome to the Modern Nomad Podcast. If you question your current reality and want to escape the nine to five grind, then this is the show for you. And now your host, me. Welcome back to the Modern Nomad Podcast. I am your host, Kyle Kennedy, and thank you so much, everyone. We hit a milestone last week of 100 listens in one week on the Spotify app. It's insane to me because I just switched over to there. So if you are listening to this and you're on Apple or Spotify, I truly appreciate you. If you're on YouTube and you're only making it a few minutes in, but you would rather listen, go ahead and head over to Apple and Spotify. Type in the Modern Nomad Podcast and you can get your updates there. It'll also send you little notifications if you hit the little bells down there. You can comment on all those things. I didn't know that, but I can uh, have a chat with you over on Spotify, which is super cool. And let's go ahead and get into today's show. Today's a little bit different. As you can tell, I'm not using my microphone. It's here, but I was having some technical difficulties. But luckily, I have these wireless microphones right here. They're the DJIs. I'm putting it right here on my shirt. And hopefully we get some really good um, audio. But today, we're going to be talking about something that... I wanted to start the podcast more about, which was how to make money while you're in van life. And I have researched this, like when I first started, like looking for a van, trying to figure everything out, selling the gym, selling my screen printing business. I really wanted to know how I was going to sustain the lifestyle because who doesn't want to travel full time, you know, but how do you do it financially? And if you Google this, YouTube this, there's a lot of creators, a lot of bloggers, a lot of people talking about how you make money online. And most of them are super impractical. For the most part, they're like, you should be a blogger or a lawyer or this and work remote and do these. But a lot of those take skills that you will already have to have in order to start making money immediately. And I know people that are getting in van life, they're not gonna go back to school so they can become a lawyer just so they can live in a van in four years. Uh, they're not going to try and spend all their time editing videos and becoming a content creator for the chance and lottery basically in order to be a content creator. So I'm giving you today five practical ones that I have done personally a few of these. A lot of my friends do the others and it works really well for them. They can travel, they get to pay off their bills, they get to do everything because let's face it, living in a van, it's a lot cheaper than actually owning a house. So let's go ahead and get started. The first one isn't so much as a specific job. It just depends on you. So we want to start with what you know. Essentially, if you have a job currently, which I hope you do, you're making money, you should be able to do that, hopefully, in a remote space. So if you currently are employed, talk to your employer about going remote. If that's not possible, you can always look into finding a similar job, but remote version of it. And when you are doing a remote version of it, just make sure you have really good internet, which I will make a video eventually about that. Right now, Starlink, they're doing some crazy things with their pricing, so I do recommend it for how good it is, but it is ridiculously overpriced in my opinion. There are multiple other versions that you can do like the T-Mobile uh, hotspot that I had. It works for a certain amount of time, but once you're out of data, you're kind of screwed. So if you're doing a remote job, it is not easy to do. For me, that's actually what I started doing when I first got out of the gym business. I continued my gym business, but in an online form. So I owned Gymology uh, Fitness in Tulsa, and then I turned it into Gymology Online. I had clients, I would work with them like once a week, I would do a remote Zoom call with them, talk to them, send them information through emails. It was super easy. So if you do have a current job that you possibly could do remote, that would be the first place to start. So that is tip number one today. The second one is seasonal jobs. This is something that my friends do quite a bit. At this moment, I have about four friends that are actually at Sturges, which is a Harley and motorcycle like rally, if you guys don't know about it. I believe it's in South Dakota, but they went up there. A few of them are doing like bar backing. Some of them are doing some random things out there, but that's a good way to make money. Also, I have another friend who during the holidays, does Christmas tree sales. So he 
parks up his bus somewhere, sells Christmas trees, and you actually make quite a bit of money to do that. You could sustain the whole year if you live on a cheaper budget. There's so many other things you can do. There's like Workaways, which is an app. You can find somebody that uh, needs work done on their property or whatever it is that they need you to do. You show up, a lot of them will actually allow you to stay on their premises. So you can stay there, you can work there, you get paid, and then you also save money just because you don't have to drive anywhere or do anything. Sometimes they'll even feed you, which is really cool. So the seasonal jobs, I think, is a very practical thing to do. There's many websites, just look online, just type in seasonal jobs, and you can look up, go wherever you wanna go, in Colorado, in Wyoming, in New York, wherever you're at, you can find something to do. The third one, we're gonna be talking about virtual assistants. So this is something that a lot of people actually talk about in their blogs or in their social media that you can actually do this from anywhere and it's super easy to get into. You just jump on like Indeed, type in virtual assistant. There's a lot of people that are looking for someone who can just work a few hours a week or a full time just depending on you, how many hours a week do you wanna work? But at this, you still need good internet. So that's the hard thing right there. If you don't have internet, this is gonna be a job that you're gonna be struggling with. So get internet, then become a virtual assistant. Uh, you could also do this in a video editing sense. So I have some friends that are video editing for YouTubers. So that is a skill that they have is video editing. And they're just doing it as their social media, basically. So if you have a company, let's say Coca-Cola, which they're not going to hire most likely for someone like this, but Coca-Cola hires you to do a uh, video for their social media. And all you have to do is edit. They did all the things. Usually they won't do this, but smaller companies will. You can edit that. You can do their copywriting. You can do all that. Super practical job. Just find it on Indeed. You can find it on any really uh, major job hunting info place. The fourth one, very practical, customer service rep. Same thing, you need internet for this one, but customer service reps are usually on the phone anyways. So when someone calls you, you would get a line that you pick up, you'll probably get another phone or whatever they do. I don't know how this works, I haven't done it. So you apply on this on Indeed, get the customer service job, just sit on the phone for a few hours a day, make some money. It could be part-time, it could be full-time. You never know, just depending on what you really want. So if I were doing this and I was out in the middle of nowhere, I wouldn't want to sit in my van from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. because a lot of us are wanting to get out of that grind, but there are part-time options. So you may be able to work four hours a day, answer some calls, open the van door and go on a hike because you're in the middle of the mountains. So it's something that's really easy to do, honestly, too, just internet. That's the number one thing, internet in a van is is super easy to get it's just sometimes pricey the fifth one this one's actually really fun nikita you guys know her if you've been watching my channel she does this a lot while she was in san diego she was pet and house sitting so there's this uh website i believe it's called verified sitters or trusted pet pet trusted sitters i don't know it's something like that but pretty much you fill out this whole form, they do like background checks, they do everything, and then after you actually do the job, you get ratings, almost like a Yelp review, and people can hire you more from that. So if, let's say, someone's going out of town, they need their pet watched and their house, you can go, you actually get to stay in their house, so you get out of the van for a few days, you may get a hot shower, a nice bed. I mean, I like my van, I like my shower, I like all that but sometimes it's nice to get out. So it can actually have multiple benefits and it's a very practical job to do because who doesn't wanna watch puppies all day? Who doesn't wanna watch all the, the cats or whatever you're into? You can literally take care of dogs that aren't yours and just love on them and then go on your own way. It's a really good job to have in, in my opinion. So those are five very practical jobs that you can do. It's a super simple list, super easy to get into, and it doesn't really take any requirement or skill. So after this, all the practical steps, I'm gonna talk about the more impractical steps right near now for the jobs that content creators and bloggers and all these people talk about because they are making money this way. But a lot of these, you have to have a skill just to get into it. So obviously, number one, content creator, that is what I do and a lot of my friends do just because I'm in this space, I've made a lot of friends in that market. But content creation is, it's like winning the lottery. If you were somebody who was good at content creation, it doesn't even matter because it's a lottery. It's not like, I know what I'm doing, so 
my YouTube videos are gonna blow up. That's not how it works. It's almost like you make a video and you wait. You make a video and you wait. And if you're getting into van life, you probably need a job with money instantly. Content creation does not work that way. Unless you just are one of the like very, very rare 0.1% chances of you posted your first video and then you have a million followers, which that has happened to several people. It's very, very unlikely. So you could work years just to make your first dollar on social media. So it's not a very practical way to actually do this. And a lot of people tell you that you should be doing this. If you're in van life, you should make the content and you'll get paid and that's your full-time job. It's not like that. It's a very hard thing to get into, but I'm not trying to deter you or scare you away from it. It is a beautiful thing to do is show off what you're doing and like all of the fun things going on in your life and showing off van life, be vulnerable, show the, the goods, the bads. It's a good thing to be in. It's just very difficult to get into. The next one, of course, they're going to tell you to do this is be a blogger or a vlogger. So type out all your stuff and use affiliate links and do all these. But in order to do that, it's the same thing. It's a lottery because who's going to visit the website if they don't know you? Even if you're getting in Google ranked, it's, it's not very easy for someone to find you. So let's say someone's right now trying to type in how to make money in a van. This video may not rank for it. It's very, very odd that sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It's not very easy to get into. Same thing with the Google blogging. You can put that out there and sometimes it doesn't even work. You just have to keep trying and trying and trying. But on the other hand, if you can make that your full-time job, there is very, very good money in that. Blogging makes good money because of AdSense, also affiliate links. And then you have a very dedicated um, clientele, I will uh, say, but it's a following of people who will literally just, whatever you're doing, they're gonna pay attention to it and you'll continue to get paid, which is a very good place to be in. Same with the content creation. Now this next one, people talk about this a lot in, in all of their videos, in their blogs, photography, videography, this is something that you have to have a skill in. Like I just bought this nice camera, I know how to use it, but am I personally going to be the person that goes out and takes incredible landscape photography or portrait photography and sell it to people? I probably could, but I'm not going to make very much money because I don't have a name. So it's very impractical for people to do this as a entry level job. If you're in van life, like I said, and you're trying to get started, you need money right now. And this is something that you're going to have to work on. So these last few tips, the more impractical ones, those are the things that should be your side hustle. You need a full-time hustle, meaning the practical jobs of like seasonal jobs, virtual assistant, all those, and then use these other ones as side hustles because it's gonna take a while to get you to where you wanna be. And I really believe that if you put your time, your energy, and your focus into those, you can grow to a point where that can be your full-time job. I was talking with my buddy, Jared Tachi, you guys know him. We were talking about the theory of one more. So if you continue to post, if you continue to do something over and over and over again, stay consistent, you never know when that next one, so the one more video is actually gonna get you to the place that you want to go. And if it doesn't, you just keep going and going and going. Why? Because you're passionate about it and you see that it's, benefit, it's beneficial for you rather than just doing it so you can make money. So currently on YouTube and my podcast, I don't make money from any of this. And I'm doing it because I'm passionate about it. I enjoy talking to you all. I enjoy making the videos, showing how to do things. Like the other day, I talked about how to install diesel heaters, or I talk about tips for iOverlander. I do that because I personally wish that content was out there when I was looking it up, trying to build my first van, or trying to find my, my first place to sleep over the night when I was in the middle of Arizona, or anything like that. I believe that there is a need for the things that I am actually putting out there. So I am doing it because I'm passionate about it and I love doing it. Will it make me money down the road? Maybe, possibly, I hope, but currently it is not the full-time job for me. Now I make money from TikTok. Is it a full-time job? No, 
but I make money from van building and doing all those things because I'm passionate about it, which makes it even more easy for, for me to make videos about it because I'm passionate about what I'm doing. I'm passionate about showing people and I'm passionate about how I do it. And I just really enjoy everything about the process. So I hope you guys actually find passion in van life to where you want to show it off, what you're doing, even the, the not so great things. Like if, if you hate something about the way that van life is, uh, going talk about it people may relate to it and that may be the one that blows up for you all right i hope you guys enjoyed the podcast about five practical jobs and possibly some few impractical jobs those are all great things you can do them if you guys are listening to this podcast on Apple or Spotify, thank you so much. If you're watching it on YouTube and you want to listen, head over to the Spotify app. You can type in the Modern Nomad podcast and you'll find it. We just hit a huge milestone. I switched over to Spotify for podcasters about two weeks ago and we hit 100 listens in one week, which is so cool because you guys are putting your time into this podcast. I love doing it. I'm going to do it even if no one's listening, but I really appreciate you all. If you are watching it and want to listen, go ahead and head over there, but I will see you guys in the next podcast. Mm -hmm.